here's a nice little experiment illustrating the factors affecting the rate of dissolving. What we have on the balance is 10 grams of anhydrous glucose and if we wish to dissolve that in say 20 centimeters cubed of water um, there are two different ways we can proceed. On the right uh, we have 20 centimeters cubed of hot water, on the left 20 centimeters cubed of cold water in the measuring cylinders there. So if we now take 10 grams of glucose, introduce it into one of the beakers, add 20 centimeters cubed of cold water, and then stir, we see some clumping, some cloudiness, and we've got to break up those lumps. And it's not the best dissolving process that we could hope for. Now sometimes the glucose clumps a lot worse than this and you can end up with one big sticky lump in the bottom of your beaker. But the cold water is certainly not facilitating the dissolving process, even though we're stirring. Well, if we take a second portion of glucose, again 10 grams anhydrous glucose, and this time add hot water, commence stirring, you see again we've got a few lumps in the bottom, but they're far quicker in dispersing and dissolving in the hot water there. So clumping not nearly as much of a problem. And the whole process over in a very short time indeed. So in order to get our glucose to dissolve, you can see we need hot water, stirring, and small powdered granules and no clumping which occurs in cold water. It just says last few specks to go. So there we have it glucose solution on the right and on the left well that's really has crusted at the bottom now and started to take a long time factors affecting the rates of dissolving